tech demos. There is a specific type of demo that is made to show off the technical capabilities of a video game, and over the years, we've had some pretty popular ones, like Mario 128 and the Zelda GameCube demo to show off the power of the GameCube, or the Final Fantasy VI and 64 tech demo, which would later then go on to become Final Fantasy VII on the PS1. And Sonic is no stranger to that. He has had multiple tech demos throughout his history, some ranging from basic demonstrations to full-on demos that could have been unrecognizable from the final game. So in today's video, I want to analyze every Sonic tech demo from the earliest one to the most recent, and I want to break it down to the very last minute detail. So before we begin, like always, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. It helps me out and it helps the channel out. And I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get into the first tech demo starting all the way back in 1990. The first one on the list is Sonic 1 Tokyo Toy Show Tech Demo that I have previously talked about before. And this demo out of all of them is my personal favorite just for the fact that we know so little about this demo and it's probably the curiosity that is making me so attached to this. The only evidence that we have of its existence is blurry screenshots and magazine screen caps. And all of that mystery around this demo just intrigues me so much. And as of recently, we actually got some new screen caps of the demo that reveals some new information to us. So before we get into that, let's go over a brief history. Sonic the Hedgehog was being developed for the Sega Genesis and around that time, they wanted to show off what they had so far at the Tokyo Toy Show in 1990. So, Sonic Team created this demo that would be playable, confirmed by our favorite criminal Yuji Naka in an interview, where he said that this was going to be playable in the Sonic Mega Collection. But, when that was being made, Yuji Naka went to look for the demo, but he couldn't find it thus making it lost media. But we did get a few screenshots of the demo being played at the event. For example, we have here Sonic in an early Green Hill Zone. It definitely has a more mountainous feel compared to the final look, making it look more like an island. We can also see this enemy that can be found in some old concept art for Sonic 1, but it doesn't appear anywhere in the final game, not even in the files. We can also see this sign that is covered up only until very recently where we got some new screenshots and after after nearly 30 years, we finally know what it says. It reads, you are welcome, never open. And since we're still on the new info, we can see a short animatic of an early title screen that flashes in instead of fades in like the retail version of the game. And as of now, that's all of the information that we have on this demo. And the hopes of us finding it get slimmer and slimmer by the day. But the fact that we found some new info just recently gives me a little hope that we may find it one day. Up next, we have a tech demo for the Nintendo DS in 2004. Appropriately named Sonic DS, this demo was playable at E3 and the gameplay takes place in Seaside Hill. The way that this game is played is that you swipe the screen left and right as fast as you possibly can to make Sonic increase in speed and you tap the top of the screen to make Sonic jump. In the footage, we can see Sonic reach up to Mach 3 speed and it has this cool effect where everything is fast but Sonic is slow to add to that mock speed effect. And in the end, it takes your best time and rings, gives you a rank, and you get put on a leaderboard. And Sonic gives you a thumbs up, like always. This looks like it was purely made to show off a concept for a Sonic game on the DS, and it seemed like it was never intended to become a full game, which I'm completely fine with, because to be honest, I don't know how they could have stretched this whole concept into a full game, but eventually we did get the Rush Rush Adventure and Colors DS, which are some really fun Sonic games. Up next, we have Sonic 06. Now, this one's probably going to be the one that has the most information, and it's also a hefty demo showing off a bunch of changes from the base game, including a scrapped feature that never made it into the final game. So strap in because it's going to be a long one. So the demo starts off with a short intro cutscene of Sonic running in a green field getting chased by Eggman robots, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you might have seen this. Eventually, he ends up in what appears to be Kingdom Valley, where he bounces on a bunch of springs to escape. Then, he gets surrounded in an open field, nearly dies, goes super, and then it destroys all the robots, thus ending the intro. We then cut to Yuji Naga, oh my god. Well, regardless, him being here is an indication that this tech demo was probably made quite early in the game's development since he hasn't fucking hit the dash yet. Then we finally get to see the game itself. And I've looked at this for a long time and to me at least, it 
looks better than the final game. I looked back and forth between the final game and the tech demo, and what I can point out is that the saturation overall definitely seems much higher than the final game, making it feel more colorful, and it actually looks more similar to Project 06 than the actual base game. The lighting also looks much softer and lighter. Sonic's idle animation also looks different, having him crouched over a bit more, and we even see some early versions of his idling animations that he does in the final game. Then we finally get to see the game in action. And for some reason, Sonic is in slow motion, but everything is in normal speed. I don't know why, it's just weird. Also, this demo has a lot of boxes, but I think that's just to demonstrate the physics. Another thing is that the camera is also extremely close to Sonic here, but we continue on and the level seems basically one to one with the final game. The railers here seem to be set on only one speed, but besides that, the level layout seems the same. Then, Sonic gets this little circle area, and it's here we get to see a cut feature from the game, the day and night cycle. The player goes into free cam mode, and we can see him speed up time and go through the different times of day, and the lighting would even update in real time, which even for the time was really impressive. It would have been a neat idea, but I think in stages at least, it seemed kind of pointless, and it would probably take a pretty heavy toll on performance, so I understand why they would take it out. Sonic continues, and instead of the air rail, there's the bridge, which was previously in Sonic Project 06, and Personally for me, I am a big Kingdom Valley Bridge supporter. Fuck the air rails. Chaos X, please bring back the bridge, please! Then he continues on and takes the lower path to eventually turn around, see a bunch of enemies, destroys the bridge, makes his way to the top path to get to the second bridge, and at that point, that's where the demo ends, and Sonic does his little victory pose. This demo is a mix of them showing off the physics and the lighting of the next generation of Sonic. Although, I do wish they kept that more saturated and colorful feel to it, because the base game really does feel very washed out. It feels like every other game's look back in the time, which was maybe that's why they probably stuck with that. But it's very interesting to see how this game changed from back then to how it was when it released. And that bridge, man. That bridge is so much better than that stupid wind ra- Oof. Jesus, man. How long have I been talking for even, man? How is that even possible? Alright, you know what? I'm too tired for this shit, man. Yo, SF! Can you talk about Frontiers or something, man? You could talk about the world shit, man. I'm going to- I'm going to sleep, man. I'm too tired for this. How did I even record for that long, man? That's not even physically possible. Okay, fine, you lazy asshole. What's up, everyone? I'm SF, and I'm here to talk about Sonic Frontiers, since Benji's bitch ass doesn't want to. Oh, piss off! If you know anything about the beta of Sonic Frontiers, then there's a 99% chance you know a thing or two about beta Chronos Island. Originally, Chronos Island was supposed to be three times the size it is in the final game, as it was basically Chronos, Rhea, and Arenos, along with some other land masses mashed together to make this massive island. There are like a million videos out there about the specifics of what this island looked like, with a lot of them being made by me, I will admit, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. Last year, we got leaked footage from an internal demo of a 2021 build of Sonic Frontiers. This leaked footage contained the full-scale beta Chronos Island. For one, we can see that the lighting looks much different, and honestly, it looks better than how it is in the final game. We can also see a scrapped Guardian that looks like the Caterpillar fight from the final game, but it has a different color scheme and different attacks. The footage ends with the Giganto boss fight, but this time, he's in Supreme's boss arena. Along with that, he has some slight design differences and even some different attacks. There's also a background track to this trailer that we don't get to hear in the final game. Tomoyo Otani did confirm that he composed several demo tracks for this game during development, so I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of them. This footage was found as a part of an internal showcase of a bunch of new Sega games, including Persona 3 Reload and the new Jet Set Radio game that was just announced. This demo of the game was most likely shown off as a demonstration of what open-world Sonic could potentially look like, but that's all but confirmed. Back before Frontiers was even announced, several playtesters were talking about a new open world Sonic game that did end up being Frontiers, yes, but still, many things they described in the demo never appeared in the final game. Like, they described Giganto's arena being covered in a thick fog, but of course, that's not in the final game. However, we can see this thick fog in the beta footage. I'm not saying this is footage of the build the beta testers played, but it's a possibility. Alright, uh, I'm done. C can I leave now? <sighs> yeah, yeah, you can go now. I'm, I'm ready to finish the script. And ladies and gentlemen, 
we have covered every Sonic tech demo to ever exist. It's always interesting to see how things change from the final game. That's one of the big reasons why I do my what this game could have looked like series, especially when most of these are so early in development. It's also cool to see some concepts that they came up with, like the DS tech demo. It is sad that after 06, public tech demos basically died out. And the only way we even knew about the Frontiers one is because it leaked. But again, public game conventions like E3 are dying out. And Summer Games Fest only allows media press to play the games. <coughs> you guys should invite me, please. <coughs> but I hope one day there will be a time where tech demos could return in the public eye. And that would be really cool to see. And those are all of the tech demos. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and comment down below. What do you think? What do you think about the demos? Did I miss one that's like super secret? Or what? who knows? Maybe I did miss one. But let me guys know what you think about these demos. Because I always love talking about like old stuff like this. Like I said before, it's one of the main reasons I do my what this game could have looked like series. I just, I'm super infatuated with like how like old stuff looked and like every like how things changed over time. It's... Very interesting, and again, that's why I really hope that one day we get to see that Sonic Tokyo Toy Show demo, because it just has that feeling of, like, nostalgia, man. It's, it's, even though we never played it, it just has that weird surreal feeling. And, speaking of Sonic 1 TS, if you guys like that type of stuff, I think you're gonna be very excited for next week's video. And I won't spoil it here, but it has a lot to do with that demo. And that's basically all I'm going to leave y'all with. If you guys enjoyed again, make sure to subscribe, do all that nonsense. And I will see y'all in the next one.